if we do not come up with new antibacterial treatment uh, strategies, we will see an increase in the death toll to infectious diseases. We will see people die from more or less uh, not so severe bacterial disease because we are not able to treat. So if we do not take the correct measures right now, we will see a high uh, socioeconomic impact of increasing morbidity and also mortality due to uh, respiratory infectious diseases. Respiratory bacterial infection clearly are a major threat worldwide and I think many people are not really aware of this. Each year more than one million children die from pneumonia across the world, which is really uh, enormous. But we don't have to go to Africa or other countries. Even if we look uh, before our own doors, we, we see, for example, in Germany, we have more than 250 to 300,000 hospitalizations for pneumonia every year. And this exceeds numbers for uh, myocardial infarction or other diseases. So it's a very, very frequent uh, uh, disease and it's also a, a killing disease. If you look to the patients who died in the uh, Spanish uh, influenza pandemic in 1918-1990, uh, these people did not die from influenza, they died from a secondary bacterial infection, which in 90% of the cases was pneumococcal pneumonia. In years with a very high viral burden, more than 10% of all hospital admissions is due to secondary bacterial pneumonia. It is always very difficult to understand the real mortality uh, uh, numbers because uh, we do not really have a very good documentation system uh, about the causes of death. But from, from our clinical practice, we know that many elderly people with underlying diseases actually then die from pneumonia. And if they had heart disease, that would count as a death from heart disease. If they had COPD, that would count as a death from COPD. But many people with underlying diseases really die from infectious compli complications. And as it is with nearly all severe infectious diseases during the last century, the burden of disease is highest in the poorest countries. The best of all pneumonias is the one that does not occur. With respect to this, it's important to have good vaccination strategies and uh, to get more people to the vaccines that we already have and uh, to develop novel vaccines against other bacteria that are currently uncovered. Most importantly, those that are frequently multidrug resistant. Studies looking at the prescription of antibiotics in exacerbations of COPD, which report use of antibiotics in more than 85% of patients. But if we look at the fact that a maximum of 50% are probably due to bacterial infection, there's a huge overuse of antibiotics in exacerbations of COPD. And this can contribute uh, to the development of uh, antibacterial resistance. It's a dilemma with the usage of antibiotics. The dilemma is, there's no question about, there is a overprescription and overusage of antibiotics. In outpatient medicine, uh, we estimate that more than 50% of the antibiotics used are not indicated. But on the other hand side, if there is a severe bacterial infection and you do not treat it with antibiotics, the patient will die. So it is the angst uh, of the physician to oversee a severe uh, infection which make him more likely to prescribe an antibiotic. What we need for the future is better biomarkers which uh, give us a uh, a security that this is a bacterial infection and which could be used to guide antibiotic prescription. I was in India in November 2013 and 95% of all 
so-called Enterobacteriaceae, a kind of gram-negative uh, pathogen, are now resistant to better lactam antibiotics and about 80% resistant to carbapenems. So the whole first and second line uh, lineage of treatment uh, has been lost. It is not only all about antibiotics because antibiotics can reduce the mortality, but, but they cannot. Uh, uh, but other measures are also very important, such as uh, supplementary oxygen, for example, uh, fluid uh, management, and many, and also the the treatment of uh, underlying comorbidities, which can exacerbate during such an infection. I think the three most important reasons why we are not having more novel therapeutic strategies brought from the molecular target to the clinical. Uh, development and establishment are first a lack of money and second a lack of money and third a lack of money. I think we are prepared for some new developments right at the moment in order to come up with, with new and, and better and more effective anti-microbial uh, treatment strategies. But uh, I, I also clearly see uh, the need for more research into the bacteriology, uh, of, uh, uh, but also into the, the clinical response to infection, uh, because uh, research has very long focused only on the pathogen, but I think we also have to focus more on the host in order to understand what is going on and why people are actually dying from a specific pathogen, whereas others who are infected by the same pathogen are not dying. So it's not only the pathogen which plays a role, and I think we also need much more clinical research in order to understand these factors, uh, which, which then might lead to completely different treatment strategies than purely antibiotics. We always focused on killing the pathogen, but when we start killing the pathogen with the antibiotic, the pathogen already in, induced or mounted an immune response uh, in the lungs and this immune response accounts for quite a huge number of uh, deaths uh, in, in pneumonia patients. So um, we are currently uh, treating our patients with antibiotics but we do not have any drugs that um, help us to increase tolerance against uh, the immune response. The major question for the future will be what is with development of new substances? How can we improve diagnostic procedures? Is there a chance also for vaccination for some of bacterial infections? Regarding um, the development of novel uh, therapeutic strategies for pneumonia, I think it's very important to uh, be integrative and uh, to cooperate with the different specialities. Uh, I think you need clinicians because they tell you what the medical need is um, but you also need to bring uh, on the table um, real basic scientists, chemists, biochemists, um, mathematicians, computer scientists, uh, you need um, biologists of course and uh, many other specialities uh, and, and you have to um, find ways to communicate and really collaborate with them. We have uh, some, some uh, quite, quite some sets on, 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 the, on the positive side, but there are also some negative points which I think we have to uh, mention. And one is obviously that we still need uh, huge funding efforts in order to use these tools, in order to prepare for the future, to come up with new antibiotics, to better be prepared for pandemics, for example, to fight TB, to eliminate TB, uh, uh, just to name some, some aims. Uh, of, 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 of our uh, programs, but but these needs huge uh, need need clearly better funding on the one hand, uh, on the other hand, and much more advocacy and in, in more understanding uh, of the burden and uh, uh, yeah more discussion also on the political level in, in order to 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 achieve what we could achieve. So I think we have the tools, but we need some more power some more support in order to be able to use them in the future uh, with success.